What's up, you guys? Andrew Cavazos here. If you don't know who I am, I'll give you a little intro. I am a professional wedding photographer here in Southern California. I book over 50 weddings a year. I make over $200,000 a year as a wedding photographer. We're going to dive into secrets of Andrew's editing. All right, let's dive in. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Crazy. This looks incredible. I'm his number one fan. All right, guys, jumping right into this engagement session. This is at a beach in Laguna Beach called Treasure Island. Very beautiful. I have the pleasure of shooting gorgeous couples pretty often. So you can see he is actually a personal trainer. I think he's like mid-20s something. You know, handsome looking dude. She's gorgeous, obviously. Got the perfect freckles. No acne, no acne. So I don't have to do much skin smoothening or anything like that today. Um, it was a little windy, so we got some hairs. Maybe we'll clean up some hairs here and there. I'm not a huge fan of doing that because it takes forever and people don't really notice. Uh, maybe this one I will. But today, this preset, I already went through and flagged this whole album. So we'll, we're skipping that part. And I also edited like a few of these. This one's already edited, just to see what it kind of looks like. This one's edited. The main thing we're gonna be doing is gonna be editing out these people in the background. So, pretty much, pretty, pretty easy session today. So, first things first, apply the preset right here. Um, adjust the temperature. I'm probably, you know what, because for some reason, I mean, looking at the photo shooting raw, it didn't look like my Kelvin was really warm, but then you can always kind of tell when you go apply the preset, it looks like this, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that Kelvin was pretty warm. Maybe I should have uh, toned it down a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go through and just put auto and exposure. So apply the preset, white balance auto, and then I'm gonna hit command copy I'm going to copy these edit settings and you can see the whole entire session I'm shooting a little too high of a Kelvin. So we're going to get that back down to auto and just have that as more of a starting off point. So I'm going to select the whole gallery here. Boom. And I'm going to hit command V. That's going to paste that edit setting onto every single photo. As you can see, it puts it back down. Now it's too cold, but we'll go and warm them up. It's gonna go through and apply that onto everything. Something else I did as I was flagging, which I've talked about in other videos, um, is if I see a photo and I think it could look good as a cropped photo, like this. You see what I mean? You see what I'm seeing here? You gotta get a couple photos like this. Taking one photo, turning it into a different photo, which is like this. Same photo, but, but different. I love to do this. So that's what, that's what I personally do. I started doing this with my photos once I got a really high megapixel camera. I shoot on a... Sony A7R5, which is like a 60 megapixel camera. And it allows me to do crazy crops like this one. Oh, this is my favorite. Wait, is this one cropped crazy? I think it is. Yeah, look at that. Look at the crop on that. And then look how crystal clear it is. That's like you shooting on an Shooting and anyone else shooting on a cropped censored 20 megapixel camera. That's what my photos look like cropped. Anyway, yeah, buy a buy an expensive camera if you want to have that same ability and not lose lose out on the potential crop. All right. Anyway, that's just honestly a little bit of a 
a cheater, cheater way to get a the look of like a 128 millimeter. Wait for it to load. There we go. Obviously, this is not edited fully. It needs to be toned down a little bit. All right, let's jump into the editing process. Now that all the presets have been applied, um, we'll apply this one. All right, so this one is already edited straight out of camera. We're basically just looking for stuff in the background of these photos and making sure these skin tones look okay, which uh, I think they do for the most part. And then cropping. We're gonna have fun cropping today. So we're gonna find ways to crop these photos to look cool occasionally. Warmer. You got a super bright background here. This is the only problem with this tunnel. It's really cool and you want them backlit. If I were to shoot this the other way, the whole rock would be way too bright and they'd be way too dark. So kind of just is what it is. All right, healing brush, press H. Now we got this person up on the rock. Get out of here. Computer lagging a little bit. Where are we at? Replacing it with this part of the thing. You know what I love about low aperture lenses, especially if you're shooting at places like this where people are in the background? It's pretty essential because everything kind of just blends together. Like from right here, no one's going to be able to be like, oh, what's that? It looks a little bit weird up here. Did you delete somebody up there? No, it's just like, no one's gonna notice that at all. So, you're good. All right, a little warmer, a little warmer. A little brighter? Maybe not, let's keep it a little, a little darker, a little moodier. All right, command copy. You know what, I'm gonna, no, I like it wide, we'll keep it wide. Command copy. Command paste. Look at that. Photo's done. It's a little off center. Bring it in a little bit. And that person's still up on the rock. All right. Oh, whoa. Hey. Lightroom actually did a good job of replacing the tree, the palm tree, with the other palm tree. See that? what I was planning on doing. Lightroom coming in clutch. Lightroom actually worked pretty good on that one. Command copy. Command paste. You see these little lags? I have a whole video talking about this. Command paste. I pressed command paste like three seconds ago. If every single thing you're doing in your editing process has a lag to it, your editing is gonna be super slowed down. We're talking like three to four times. 10 times, depending on how fast your computer is. Get a fast computer, learn the, learn the keyboard shortcuts. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Time is money. If I'm over here, you know, editing this gallery for 10 hours, when it really could only take me two hours if everything was just lightning fast, then I could be spending, you know, those remaining hours creating content, learning how to advertise. like anything else. For someone like me, you get to a point where you have so much work, you start really valuing your time and thinking, how can I make more time? How can I create more time? Number one, buy the latest, greatest computer, fastest computer. Number two, uh, learn all the keyboard shortcuts and don't get caught up editing photos that don't need to be edited or doing stuff, edits that no one's gonna notice. Focus on prioritizing the essentials, uh, things that people care about more than petty, tiny, minute things like, oh, her, her arm has this tiny little speck right here. I need to go clean that up. Like, no, no one's gonna notice that. No one's gonna care. And ultimately, if you get her photos back sooner, she'll value that more, most likely, than you spending another two weeks editing her gallery because you're editing everyone else's gallery like that and you're two months behind. I guarantee the photographer that does a 95% uh, flawless job 
aka me. I mean, most of the stuff people just don't care about. That's where that 5% comes in. Like, sure, I could spend 5% of my time going like, oh, her thumb looks a little bit too red. It's like, no one cares. You know what I mean? So pick and choose, choose your battles when it, come, when it comes to editing. I, I pick and choose my battles when it comes to editing. I don't try to sit and perfect every single photo, unless it's like really obvious, like, okay, you know what, like, he's going to hate the fact that his skin looks super red right here. I'll fix that. You've seen me do that in other videos. So there's certain things. Copy, paste, edit settings. Walking into the sun here, getting a little bit of that harsh light on the side of his face, not ideal. So I flagged this. I don't know if it's going to be one that I'm going to love and want to deliver, but maybe. Yeah, it's cute. We'll, we'll deliver it. I'm going to warm it up a little bit more. Cool. Copy. Paste. A lot in this little tunnel right now. Having too much fun. This is kind of like the main photo spot. Actually, there's like three. Right behind this couple, you'll see there's some other cool spots too. Hmm. I don't know what's up with... I'm so zoomed in here. I don't know what's up with like... It's almost like she looks too bright and too dark at the same time. It's because right behind her is like super blown out, but then like he's kind of dark and she's like, yeah, it's just a weird lighting situation. Not ideal to be honest. And then, you know, this is where you could get into the whole, let's, let's see what this does. Selecting sky as the background. Does it? No, it doesn't do it right. I mean, it did technically do it right, but it's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to have it select this whole background that's all bright. It's not going to do that for me. All right, I'm going to say a little warmer and looks good enough. No one in the background. Oh, this is kind of cool. Copy. I'm going to close this up a little bit so they're in that like corner of it. You know what I'm going to do on this one? I'm going to get wild. Brush tool. Reset all of these. And then we're going to go to dehaze plus 33. We'll see what that looks like. I don't really know if that's going to look good or not. And I'm going to brush all this up here. And even more up here. And might as well, since I'm already here, brush this back around a little bit. Okay, Let's see what that looks like. And then we're going to play around with this dehaze. See, you can see what it does here. Kind of darkens everything up. It darkens it, but it also. We don't really want it to be more colorful. It's not really what we're going for. This kind of just draws more attention to them, which is kind of what I want. I feel like these rocks were so bright, it's almost like that also draws attention to them, but that's not that doesn't look good. We just want them to kind of pop in some way, shape, or form, whether they're brighter, they're the brightest, or they're the darkest. I think them being brighter than the rest, kind of what we're going for here. And then I'm gonna take it a step further usually don't do this on photos unless I really like the photo. And we're going to... I'm going to just make this brighter and then add contrast. Now... Now it looks okay. Alright. Before, after. Before, after yeah I like it I don't love it you know what it is this rock it's too orange 
Watch this. Whoop. Soul Rock, Dust, and let's kill that color a little bit. Desaturate. And take it a step further. Let's soften that rock a little bit. Make it look like it's more in the foreground, more blurred out. So even less focus on the rock, more focus on them. How cute. I like this. You could technically have this like be a uh, engagement photo card if you had like their words up here, you know, and their wedding date, and then like the details right here. That'd be kind of cool. This is how I'm thinking when I'm shooting these engagement sessions, by the way. Like, which one are they going to use their save the date? Maybe this one? There's another one I shot specifically. And I said, this is going to be your save the date card. I put that in their head. So, it'd be kind of funny. It'd be kind of cool if they used it. There was a person way back here on the beach. That looks like he's bending over. But it's all blurred out. Delete. Goodbye. I don't think that's another thing. Maybe. Is that petty? I don't know. I notice it, then they might notice it. That's how I, that's how I approach this stuff. I wouldn't notice it. I'm not going to bother. Alright. Copy. Paste. Same old deal. These are all just wide shots. Copy. You know what? I don't know why he's looking extra like he's he's very shadowed in this photo for some reason. It seems a little more than usual. Let's just give him a quick brush down. All right, exposure plus 60. We can adjust it later if it's too much or too little. Computer's lagging. And now that I'm zoomed in, I'm seeing the guy above his head. We're going to delete that guy again. Feet probably don't matter. All right. Perfect. No, I'm just kidding. All right. I like to do a mixture of plus shadows and plus exposure because I think the plus shadows kind of gets you the same effect without being so obvious like the guy's glowing. All right. It's better, more even. Yeah. All right, let's delete that guy above his head real quick. Yeah, this is kind of the reason I love, it's a love-hate relationship shooting at the beach, especially these like really nice locations, because every photographer's there. You know it's just going to be like a nightmare. You're kind of like fighting for spots or like waiting your turn a lot of the time. Like, hey, are you done with this spot? Okay, like, uh, cool. Or like, hey, so someone else wants the spot. It's, you got to like take turns. That's the name of the game, you know. If you're if you're in someone else's spot, like, be like, hey, I got like five more minutes, and then you can have this spot or whatever, you know. Be be a team player when you're shooting. Or another thing I was gonna say, uh, if I'm like right here and someone's shooting behind me towards the rock, I'll try to move out of the way sooner than later. Cool. I like this photo. This is this might be my favorite one right here. He's popping. She's popping. You know what? He's popping too much. Click on that. Exposure down. He seems very orange. Perfect. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead and a little, little desaturate on his skin. Because I, I brightened him up, so now his skin was like super orange, but now he looks good. Uh, I like this photo a lot. I'm going to five star that one. Just for me to go back to later. All right. Did I, I just copied this and pasted it, and they're both way darker. That doesn't, 
that doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna brush them both, see what that looks like. Cute. Yeah, they're a super cute couple. They live close to the beach. Got the beach vibe going on. Her elbow is a little too red for some reason. So I'm gonna brush this. Brush and let's see what my current editing settings look like. You know what, that works. Uh, something I love to do for it, it, skin tones like red patchy spots is this dehaze negative positive negative you can see the difference there so if you just do dehaze a little bit it'll basically like blur and whiten and brighten all at the same time which is kind of perfect you know what now her elbow looks non-existent so i need her elbow to look the perfect amount of elbow elbow e I want it to be a little bit darker because it is her elbow but yeah that looks good yeah it looks like a normal elbow now enough elbow talk nice cute you know what I don't like this photo remove Remove flag. We're not delivering that one. All right. Warm it up. Oh, man, this background is just so bright. You know what I should have done? It's pretty much had like a giant reflector that reflected light onto them. But I usually just don't put myself in these types of situations where it's like, I've actually never shot at this beach before because there's always a million people and I just hate those types of beaches because you, can, you can't really get a good photo, right? This is just so many people. It's like, how do you get a good shot without having to clean up the whole background of every single shot? You're not going to do that. So, as much as I liked this tunnel, it's kind of a lighting nightmare because of this reason. You have... You know, I'd have to go through and like, kind of just, the lighting just is what it is. Unless I had a big like reflector bouncing light onto them, it would have never looked perfect. Um, this photo's good. You know what, I think, I think it's worth saving. Oh, man, this background is just so blown out right here. Let's see what this does. Decent. Highlights down, shadows up, contrast up a little, exposure down. Wow, this almost never looks good when you drop the highlights to negative 100, shadows up to 100. That almost never looks good, but it kind of works for some reason. I don't suggest ever doing that. It always looks bad, but for some reason, it doesn't actually look bad on this photo. Probably because there was just so many highlights and so many shadows that needed fixing. Um, let's add a little more contrast back into this photo. And then it kind of kills it, you know what I mean? Like, this is like that perfect exposure. Don't be this guy though. That's just a weird, it's a weird photo. People want that contrast, gotta make them pop. We get pop, pop, pop. All right. That's good. I like it. It's good enough. And are we going to copy edit settings and paste edit settings? Uh, uh. Uh, I don't like it. Let's just restart from the not doing that. All right. Back to original. Preset straight on. Warming up those skin tones. His skin tone is definitely a lot brighter, a lot oranger 
than hers. So he might need a little bit more attention. You got to, when you're doing people with like different skin tones, couples with different skin tones, I, I like to focus on matching kind of one skin tone for the most part, usually hers. And then his, I'll just like adjust manually, uh, you know, so yeah. Cute. Big smiles. I love focusing on big smiles. I always flag photos with big smiles. When people get their galleries back, I notice they they kind of look back and go, oh my gosh, look how fun that was. Look how, how fun, how much fun we were having. And also posting photos with big smiles, personally I found you kind of attract more people that are like this. Your your portfolio attracts who you book. So if you post a lot of like super happy couples, I'm going to end up booking a lot of super happy couples. That's what I found. So yeah. Paste. Cute. Once again, her skin tones look good. His skin tones look too orange. Brush tool. We're using the same settings we did for the last elbow, actually. Let me see if that looks right still. You know what? This Hayes doesn't, we don't want to blur out any part of him. We just want to brighten him a little bit. All right, and then actually this color, it's a little too much. We don't want that color to be so negative. I'm gonna just do temperature. That looks good. All right, I'm kind of setting that up for the next couple photos too. Taking my time, getting that, getting that looking good. All right, cool. Excuse me, sir. You think I don't see you back there? That's petty. That's petty. All right. Ooh, getting into these. These are my favorite. These are really pretty. like a borderline model couple right here. I don't know what this is back here, but it looks like a person. So it's out of here. Gone. Does that look worse? Um, I can't really tell. Whatever, I'll just leave it. All right, beautiful. Her hair was flying a lot. Um, and I kind of told her, I was like, hey, are you more of a perfectionist when it comes to like your hair? You want it to look perfect in every photo type of thing? Or do you like it kind of looking more um, like let the wind blow it type of feel? And she said, yeah, I'm, I'm more go with the flow. So obviously, if it, unless it's like blowing straight up, I'm not really going to be like particular about it. Like I kind of like how it's blowing around his cheek. It's kind of cool. But I think there were some photos where um, probably could have maybe adjusted her hair a little bit. Because hair is pretty difficult to fix in my opinion. You can try but it's usually not gonna look good. Like like big portions of hair like this. Huh, wait a minute. Hey, look at that. It's like, looks pretty good actually. Kinda works. Let's try it, let's, let's move this a little bit.
Yeah, I think that actually looks pretty good. Again, I'm not the type of person, I mean, if you just look at the photo straight up, looks pretty good, looks great. I don't think too many people, if you are a perfectionist, you're probably not gonna get as many photos. <coughs> because, yeah, a lot of photographers out there will just like sit and perfect every single hair on every single photo. I'm not, I'm not really that type of guy. And if that's, uh, if that's you, I mean, more power to you, but I'm trying to edit high volume, get these clients, their photos back sooner. Um, and it, she told me straight up, I don't care if my hair is blowing in the wind and she's, she's super chill. And I, I can't even fix some of these hairs too. I mean, it's more of a vibe at this point. The, the wind was blowing a ton in the background. Okay, so main thing you're seeing, uh, these hairs are completely normal on someone's head. It's pretty much like this 80% of the time. But the only reason they're popping so much right here is because she's backlit and it's completely blown out back here. This hair is not gonna be looking like this later in the session because the lighting's just gonna be different. Watch. Like this type of stuff. Her hair is not looking like that because, you see this? Her hair is not looking like that because the lighting is just different. It, those hairs don't show up. These, these photos here, her hair looks like that simply due to your shooting in a, uh, a tunnel where there's a ton of light in the background. And that's why you're able to see those hairs. Um, so pronounced like that. So yeah, all right, warm these up. Copy, paste. This is cute, it's a vibe. Ooh, I like this. Copy, paste. Ooh, it's a vibe again. All right, I'm kind of over this tunnel, but I'm also loving it at the same time. Deleting that person out the background. Did I crop this one? Nope. Straight up amazing, straight out of camera. I'm that good. Increase the contrast a little bit, but it ends up just blowing out the whites in the background even more. So we'll put it back. Copy edit settings, paste edit settings. Cute. Got a little family in the background. They didn't pay me. So I'm not taking their photos. That's how that works. Let's crop this a little bit. Sometimes if I like the height of a photo, but I just don't like the length, like they're not centered type of thing, I will come over here and do five, four. And that allows me to keep the height. It's also the size of Instagram. Instagram allows the side by side five, four, and then also up and down is five by four. So if you if you ever wanted to crop a photo and say, hey, what does it look like exactly for Instagram? This is it, it's five by four. Now you know. All right, that's a vibe. That's a vibe. Oh, it's a vibe, yeah. Again, hairs. I'm not gonna be a perfectionist about it. It's up to her. I, I honestly, with some of these photos, I would have probably just not flagged them had I known she was a like super perfectionist. You would ultimately just get less photos because I wouldn't flag photos where there's a million hairs coming into his face. But if she's like, oh, it's a vibe, it's cute, whatever, I look good, I don't care. Like obviously there's wind, who cares, then I know that about her and I'm gonna flag this photo even though there's some hairs. So really just learn your couple a little bit and obviously you can, if some photo like this is amazing and you're like, oh my gosh, she's gonna love this, everything about this photo is perfect, except there's a few hairs. You know what, man, that's kind of a lot of hairs. Maybe I shouldn't deliver this. 
whatever. Delivering it. My, my philosophy is like, might as well give them more than less and they can choose if they like the photo or not. Maybe other photographers would say, oh, it's unprofessional. Don't deliver photos with hair if you're not going to clean them up. That amount of hair is on, especially all in and around this guy's entire face and stuff. That is a nightmare. That is a 20 minute process to clean this up. I'm getting very insecure about this photo, to be honest. Maybe I won't deliver it. Do we have other ones that look identical? This is definitely less. I just, I don't know. This this photo is like making me maybe, as I'm talking about it, maybe not want to deliver it. But you know what, whatever. She's going to see this one photo and forget it. I want my money back. You know what? Oh, man. It it's just it's just too much hair. Oh, but it's a good photo. But is it too much hair? It's the beach. It's a vibe. Keeping it. We're keeping it. We're keeping the photo. It's the beach. Sandy toes, salty kisses, messy hair blowing in the wind, big smiles, laughs, young, wild, free. Yes. Yes, you're right, Andrew. Keep the photo. Just call it vibes. All right, this is a cute photo of him. Um, I showed her this photo and she was like, oh my gosh, you look so cute. You look so handsome. So I'm going to flag this because I know she likes it. She liked it when I sh showed it to her. So, yeah. Desaturate that little bit. You see that? Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to warm it up and then desaturate it. So it, it essentially just makes it like a muted warmer look that's like a quick cheat code for this preset so let me let me show you what i did again okay let's let's exaggerate it for a little bit more exaggeration effect so you can really see what i'm doing here okay photos too warm right colors are popping too much i'm going to warm it up even more and then desaturate it a little bit so that it ends up looking like that it's still warm it still has color he still has pigment but the only color is warm essentially that's what I do that's my quick hack for working with photos that are too much color all right, next, warm this up a lot. This is cute. I love this shot. It's like the pre-kiss shot. This is a vibe right here. Pinterest AF. Yeah, the skin tones, get those skin tones looking good. He looks good. They're both looking nice. I think she's a little bit cold. You can kind of tell uh, skin starts to get a little bit, uh, you know, I don't even know. You start seeing like textures on the skin a little bit when it gets cold outside, especially with girls. So what I like to do, dehaze, negative 10, negative 9-ish. We're going to go temperature up, 15, tint. This is a jumping off point based on my years of experience, this usually does the trick. And we're gonna brush, brush her skin, make it look very soft, very smooth and warm, a little warmer. You weren't freezing cold that day. You were nice and warm. And then I'm going to go negative 75, negative 75-ish texture clarity. That also makes that skin look super smooth. And then we're gonna increase that warmth just a hair. Yeah, I think that's about right. 
the key with good editing is it's not noticeable. You never knew it happened, right? Looks unedited. That's, that's kind of what you want. Um, so here we have negative 16 highlights, temperature up 15-ish, tint up 10-ish, texture down 75-ish, clarity down 75-ish. Um, dehaze negative nine. I think that's a little too much. I feel like negative five is pretty much the max before it starts looking like obviously edited. So negative five does like the trick for me. It's like just enough to, to do the trick. All right. Look at that. Beautiful. And she looks warm. You know, a little bit more on the back of her arm here. How's that? Beautiful. Let's go a little bit on his face. Now I'm getting brush tool happy. Let's brush tool every single part of them. Everything. You get a brush tool. You get a brush tool. Everybody gets a brush tool. That's an Oprah reference for you young kids out there. All right. Wow, that looks like absolute crap. We're not gonna paste edit settings. And once again, back at it again with the extreme crop. I don't know if this will look good, but I just, I just threw it in here. Because I didn't like his face. I think he was like, you know, adjusting, maybe, you know, doing something real quick. This was kind of in between photos. So we're gonna go back to that crop here. And um, when you crop in a lot, I'm gonna show you something, a little trick here. You can actually make this photo look a little more sharp. You can almost tell it's cropped in. You can kind of tell something just looks off about this. It looks like low quality. It's almost a little bit too cropped in. I'm pushing the limits a little too much. Clarity on my preset is negative 10. We're gonna put that back to zero. We're gonna increase the texture plus 10. We're gonna increase the grain to 20. Size, you might ask? Three. Roughness, 20. And that looks bad. Grain, we're going 10. All right. Vignette, add a tiny bit of vignette, like five, just so it looks like you took the photo. Because naturally lenses kind of have a vignette on them, like a good lens will naturally have a vignette on them. So if you add a vignette to a cropped image, it'll almost look a little bit more like it was shot like that on purpose through an actual lens um, subconsciously. People will kind of go, oh, kind of kind of looks good. Kind of looks like you shot that. Nope, I cropped it and then added a vignette. Anyway, going back up here, um, I might play around with this a little bit. Contrast, I might play around with this Saturation a little bit. Whatever I think it needs. This, this is not a one size fits all thing at all, besides the vignette and the grain. The grain, you add a little bit of grain to the photo, I'm telling you, it'll just make it look like a sharper little bit, kind of like a false sharpening without actually making it look sharper. Oh, here's the thing, I was forgetting this. Uh, manual noise reduction. So here's the main trick right here. You're gonna noise reduce and then add grain. What? So it almost like makes things look smooth and then makes things look sharp. But really you're just putting a grain on top of the smooth to make it appear sharp. It's like a sharp smooth. And then it kind of just looks like a vibe at that point. Dang, that's a vibe. I know. I know it's a vibe. Next, moving on. That looks good. 
If I were to copy that edit settings, put it on this one. Ooh, kind of vibe. No, you can tell. They kind of look a little bit like too soft from a distance. Let's not do that. Let's go back and put the original preset back on it. And we're warming it back up. Looks a little green for some reason. Not sure why my white balance failed me on this, but I'm very disappointed. Sony. All right, we got brush tool coming in here. We need to redo the brush settings, I think. Yeah, because we were smoothing out her arm before. So now we're just gonna go plus 20, plus 15, and saturation down a little bit. Um, negative five. All right, we're good. That looks pretty good. Cute. Copy edit settings, paste edit settings, cute. I'm gonna crop this in a little bit more. I don't really like her feet positioning in this one for some reason. It's cute. I say in this photo, I say, I want you to rock with each other. You're gonna, I get them in that position. All right, put your hands like this and then you're gonna hug his hands and then step away from her a little bit so that you're kind of off center. I can see your face a little bit. And then I want you guys to rock with each other the way you want your marriage to be. And that usually makes them laugh because they go, how do I want my marriage to be? Not too rocky. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's hilarious, Andrew. Man, you really are the best photographer ever. And I go, oh, stop it. No, but for real. That's what I say. And then they end up just kind of doing this, rocking with each other side to side and laughing. You want to prompt the natural candid laughs. I like to prompt the natural candid laughs uh, because everyone likes to laugh. Fake laughing is so 2010. No, it actually works really good for a group of girls to just say, all right, everyone look at each other and laugh. And I can't help but use it still to this day, occasionally, if I'm just like running out of prompts or just need a quick laugh, because they're so good at it. Girls are so good at fake laughing. Guys, it's just really awkward. Don't, I, I don't ever ask a guy. The guys, for some reason, the groomsmen, okay, everyone look at each other and laugh. They're just like, what? Like. I'm not going to do that. The girls are like really good at it for some reason. Okay, we got a little bit of a white patch showing up on her face. So I'm going to increase the warmth. And because of my preset, it's going to delete that for some reason. Too warm? Hmm. Desaturate. Now it looks good. All right, copy edit settings. Paste edit settings, back at it again with the uptight crop. This one actually looks really nice and it actually isn't even too cropped. The other one was like double this. So I don't even need to touch this. Let's add a tiny vignette, mine as well. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. Now we're just gonna go like negative five or six, something like that. Just add a little bit of a vibey vibe to it. Copy edit settings, paste edit settings. That's perfect. Copy edit settings. You know, she's a little too bright. Down a tiny bit. All right. Copy edit settings, paste edit settings. Why? Why is he so dark and she's so bright? Because the light's coming in right where she's pointing her face, opposite of where he's pointing his face. And then you end up with that. All right, and there we are. Looks a little better. You know what? This brush tool, let's make it a little more extreme. Perfect. Now we're gonna ex we're gonna bring this up a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna actually collectively, with the whole photo, bring it down. Here we go. You know his face is still looking very colored, full. Looks better. 
All right, cool. Copy out of settings. Crop this in a little bit. And on to the next one. Beautiful. Oh, that was already cropped. Sick. All right. This tunnel really is a lighting nightmare. So you're seeing a lot of just me doing things I probably normally wouldn't do given any other lighting situation because I don't need to. It's all about getting it right out of camera, straight out of camera. But this tunnel was just kind of cute. I thought the lighting was good, but the fact that he's turning away from the light, hiding into the shadows here, and she's turning right towards the light, makes for a good photo. I, don't, I wouldn't want it any other way, but his face got really dark turning in towards her, so. You got that situation going on. All right, ring shot. Ring shots are essential, in my opinion, for getting a good uh, engagement session. Gotta get a photo of that bling. And her nails are done, which is good. Sometimes nails not done, then they get all insecure and won't let you take a photo of their hands. Then you're like, all right, fine. I won't take a photo of your hands. So, but people usually, girls usually know what's up. They come prepared for the ring shot. They almost are excited when you say, let's do a ring shot. They're like, you get to take a picture of my nails? Oh, hell yeah. I just got them done. Like, I figured, I figured you did. All right, ooh, we got a blurred out seagull flying in the background. I'm gonna add 10 of those. I'm going to add 10 of those seagulls using this tool right here. Let's add five more. Delete. Oh wow, I literally just pressed the healing tool and I was gonna go grab something I was gonna go grab the seagull and move it over here so it duplicates it and it did it automatically. Is it gonna do it again? No. That's hilarious. Isn't this funny? This has gotta look stupid. I'm gonna delete this. That is, that is not happening. Undo. Undo, 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 undo. Yeah, back to, back to the basics. This is auto white balance? This still looks extremely, what was as shot? Oh gosh, that was as shot. Hold on, what does this actually look like straight out of camera? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty warm, I suppose. But it doesn't look as bad as this. Slap a preset on there. They're literally on fire. All right, we're gonna go to auto. That'll get us a little closer to what we want. And warming up the skin tones, cooling off the skin tones. When you're that far off, you start having to go into the tint because it's just like, you're just so far off. Tint needs to go down into the green a little bit more. Man, that was, that was very off. I have to play with this for a minute. Hopefully if I get this one right, the next 10 photos shot at this location, same exact lighting, are just gonna be copy, paste. So take your time and get this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time and get this one really good. I think, I think it needs a little desaturation. That's it, in my opinion. I think that looks good. All right, copy, but first, I'm going to five by four. I'm gonna do that. Copy edit settings. Paste edit settings. Nice. Got this guy in the background again. Quit enjoying yourself on the beach. I'm trying to do a photo shoot half a mile away. All right. Boom. 
five by four again. I don't know why I do the five by four. I think it's just because I want to keep as much of the photo as possible. We're talking height. And if you just let it as shot and then you just pull it in, I don't like how it cuts off the top and bottom. I want to keep all of that. You can ultimately, as the client, decide if you want to cut off the top and bottom, but I'll give you that option when you create your cards and whatnot. He, this, this whole shoot, her skin tones are very like white and he's very, he looks like he just got a spray tan, which I don't think he did, but for some reason, my preset is kind of turning his skin very orange. So we need to brush him a little bit more in these photos. I'm telling you guys, any computer lag, I will be getting a new computer at some point, but this not being a very good role model for you, for you guys talking all this crap on getting a new computer and saying that's really slowing down your time, but I am not buying a new computer. This is the M1 MacBook. And I feel like I don't want to just buy the same exact looking, no, it's not a MacBook, it's a, an iMac. The same exact computer, but oh, it has the M3. It's like, I don't know, like give me a new design or something. Like I, I just can't really justify it at this moment buying the M3 that just came out when it feels like I'm buying the exact same computer for $2,500 again, you know? It's like, at least like, I don't know, make it have a something else better. It's like people buying a new Tesla, <laughs> you know? It's like the same exact design car for the last like five years. I need the newer one for no reason at all. Tesla, if you didn't know, is notorious for keeping the exact same design. That's what Elon wanted to do uh, in an interview. I think he said something about like, the car design is never gonna change. Every time the new car comes out, you just update your car and you're essentially just driving the new car. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, I guess. So you know how like Hondas and stuff, they'll just keep making new you, you buy the latest greatest honda and then like next year your car is like the old outdated version so he was trying to prevent that from happening like oh invest in a tesla you know it's a good investment so i go buy one and the guy immediately devalues the car i bought i bought a tesla in 2022 early 2022 and at the time all the cars just started going up in value, just nonstop. All of them were up, up, up in value. And I thought, like, you buy a Tesla, five years from now, it's going to be worth the same or more because they have this whole, like, auto driving thing, technology coming out, and the cars are just going to get more and more expensive. But no, the car went down, like, $30,000, worst decision of my life. I love my car, though. It's really nice. But bad investment. Bad investment. Not, not a smart investment. The car went down in value, Andrew? No crap. Yeah, well, I'm not a good investor. That's why I don't play stocks. That's why I just, I just invest in myself. And I think that's the key. Any good businessman, just invest in yourself and ultimately you're pretty much in control of your own gains and whatnot. I have put all my money directly into my own business, into myself, into my own hustle. We're talking like camera gear, computers, all that stuff. But that alone is not really going to make you any money. What's going to make you money is being able to be in front of as many people as possible, have a simple website. People can easily fill out everything. Read a lot of books, invest. Uh, the main thing that did it for me personally, why I am as successful as I am as a photographer, when I tell people I'm a wedding photographer, they go, oh, hmm, 
Well, hmm. and, and really what they're saying is, oh, you're, you're poor. Because everyone knows every wedding photographer is like a broke wedding photographer. Every wedding photographer is just like, like that's not, go get a real job, dude. It's not a real job. Little do they know, I'm probably making more than them. But that's because I'm probably top 1% most successful wedding photographers in the world. And that's because there's a million wedding photographers out there. But, so that's not like that, that's not really like a flex. You, you're probably making more, make more than like $75,000, you're probably top 1% wedding photographer. But if you're not approaching it from a very business perspective, you're probably not gonna make that much money. A lot of these people will just like take photos for fun, wedding photographers out there. They're not really thinking about it from a business perspective. How can I, you know, make the most amount of profit based on my time, my money, my resources? How can I provide the best product out there available? Those of you who have just come here to watch an editing tutorial, you're now getting a business 101 lecture. No, I'm not lecturing. I'm just telling you my experience in the business while I'm editing these photos. You can watch me edit. But yeah, my experience as a wedding photographer is, I, I originally got into wedding photography right after my own wedding in July of 2017. And I realized firsthand how hard it was to find a good wedding photographer with just simple upfront everything. Like there was nowhere to just go shop for a wedding photographer. Everyone was like, oh, reach out and then I'll give you my pricing. It's like. Dude, I don't have time to do this with a thousand people. I just want to go find what I like and quickly look at your packages. What do you have to offer? You have no offers available? Okay, next. I'm not even going to reach out to you. Please enter your entire life story and all of your information just to find out my pricing. It's like, how about you just tell me so I can shop? And if I like your stuff, I'll buy your stuff. That is how I went into finding a wedding photographer myself. And it was really annoying. And I realized like, if I could just create a business where all my pricing's up front, it's relatively affordable and I do really good work, I think I'll book enough people who hate this game that all wedding photographers are playing where it's like, reach out to me first and then maybe I'll tell you my pricing, Ooh, but you better give me all your information first. It's like, you're just so annoying. Quit playing this dumb game where you're trying to like bait and switch people into like, Oh, they already reached out, so now I can just tell them any price and they're more likely to book and do 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 do. It just feels scammy in my opinion. It feels annoying. It feels like you're just trying to like hide something. What are you trying to hide? Why are you trying to hide your pricing? Are you gonna change your pricing based on certain things I enter into your you know fields? Oh, my wedding date is on a Saturday. Oh, I'm gonna send you my high price now. Oh, my wedding date's on a Monday. Oh, I'm gonna send you my low price now. It's like, no, everything up front all the time, pricing affordable, as affordable as, it, as possible without being like cheap, unless you're just starting out, then I would go cheap. But yeah, that's how you go into business. I, I got into wedding photography right after my own wedding. I got into it and started reading a ton of books on business. I started reading tons of books on business. We're talking audiobooks. Uh, at the time I was doing carpet cleaning and I just, I just decided I'm going to read business books. I'm going to read how to actually own a business, how to sell. That's the main key thing. Cause at the time I was doing carpet cleaning and it is a sales job. Carpet cleaning, I was working for my father-in-law. He owned a carpet cleaning business and there's like opportunity. You walk into someone's house and you go, Hey, Hey, Mrs. Jones, uh, I know we're here to clean your carpets today, but would you like to clean your couch too? I'll give you a deal on it. And you know, when's the last time you cleaned your couch? And you kind of talk them into cleaning their couch if they want it. But ultimately, you're not trying to be like scammy, like, oh, let me clean your couch. And ha ha ha, her couch doesn't even need to be cleaned, but I'm going to force her to act like she needs it cleaned. Like there's none of that crap going on. And there are people out there that are like that. That's messed up. Don't be like that guy. You want to give service where it's needed and a lot of people if they've never cleaned their couch and they've had their couch for 10 years and they've never like deep cleaned their couch probably really does need to clean so there's a lot of opportunity to upsell stuff whatever moral of the story 
learning sales was of interest to me. So learning sales, coming from a little bit of a sales background already, I was into the idea of how do I sell wedding photography? How do you create a business where people can shop and then they want to book you for their wedding? And I have personally just found what what works for me is what I would have wanted at my own wedding, which is just upfront pricing, uh, easy to understand everything, packages, easy to understand, relatively affordable, fair, fair price, I guess is what you could call it. You know, I'm not over here trying to do like $20,000. I'm a luxury guy. Like, okay, cool. You're going to only book luxury clients who are actually booking luxury people. So if you haven't shot any luxury high-end stuff, you're probably not going to book any luxury high-end stuff. Obviously, everyone's just trying to get into that. Everyone's calling themselves a luxury wedding photographer just because they shot like two weddings that looked semi-luxurious. Everyone just it, it is a game of fake it till you make it, but it's not, I don't think that's ultimately how you're going to make a bunch of money. If you actually want to make stacks, you want to make $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year, I really don't think you're going to get there the, in my opinion, okay, let me, let me just speak from my opinion. I personally don't think I'm going to get there from being a luxury wedding photographer, especially today. As the economy is starting to crash, me and my wife, my wife does photography for newborns and stuff like that, and she, uh, she notices that's the number one thing people are cutting out right now. No one's, no one's booking her for newborn stuff. Because what's the one thing you're going to cut out? It's definitely not your wedding photographer. You know, you're spending a lot of money on this day. You want it captured. But they are going to cut out newborn photography. Because that's kind of like a luxury thing. You don't really need it. And you technically could do it yourself. With wedding photography, you can't do it yourself. And you do need it. Most people would agree. So that's where that comes in. But what I'm saying is... Basically... If you look at business from a, how can I serve the most customers? How can I do the best job? How can I make a, the biggest impact in my industry and serve people, be a service provider, do good work, make an honest living? It's not gonna be luxury wedding photography. I feel like to a point that just becomes, the only reason you are luxury or $20,000, the only reason you should, anyone ever should be $20,000 in my opinion is if you're just like an extremely perfectionist, like you do composite images or stuff like that, like you're spending a ton of time editing and perfecting every single photo, or your supply and demand, meaning so many people want to book you that you're just like, you have to increase your price because otherwise, you know, everyone wants to book you. It's just supply and demand. You know, your price goes up. Simple as that, which makes sense. More power to you. That'd be great. But in my experience, I'm kind of taking the, uh, let's compare it to like In-N-Out Burger versus Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Okay. Ruth Chris Steakhouse sells luxury, you know, fancy meals right? It's a restaurant, high-end, nice, expensive steaks versus In-N-Out selling burgers for cheap, pretty affordable, right? It's like, it's like the best burger you can get at, at that price. Pretty sure Carl's Jr. is like double the price of In-N-Out and it's not as good in my opinion. So In-N-Out Burger, for those of you who are not in Southern California, is a burger chain in Southern California that everyone loves. Most people love In-N-Out. You got the occasional person that's like, eh, five guys is better, whatever. Moral of the story is In-N-Out Burger makes about $2 million in one weekend selling burgers for cheap. Ruth Chris Steakhouse making $2 million in one weekend for one, one chain? I doubt it. I doubt it. Moral of the story is there's more money to be made in these smaller, more 
it's like it's like the the best most affordable product is probably going to make more money because you're selling to the masses majority of people are going to go to in and out on a sunday afternoon versus ruth chris steakhouse and you're going to end up making more your profit margin is sure one tenth compared to ruth chris steakhouse probably not it's probably like one fifth compared to ruth chris steakhouse but you're getting 10 times the customers so you're making double the money ruth chris steakhouse makes I'm making double the money that luxury wedding photographer is making because I'm serving double the clients and charging 75% price or something like that. You get what I'm saying? More volume, the better. Don't sit and perfect every single photo. Charge accordingly. Charge, charge prices that are fair, that people are happy to pay. Edit things that people care about. Don't be sitting here perfecting every single image for half an hour when no one's going to notice any difference. Even this small stuff back here, I'm not really noticing it, but I might delete it here and there just because I can. It takes two seconds. But every, every time I'm thinking about business of wedding photography, I'm thinking about in and out Burger versus... Ruth Chris Steakhouse and how in and out probably makes more money. Be the in and out. That's what I'm trying to be. And I think it's working out for me pretty well. Cute. People love in and out. I don't know people ra uh, raving about Ruth Chris Steakhouse. I think generally speaking, all right, this is my last tangent on business. Those of you who are just here to watch me edit. Um, yeah, supply and demand, obviously that's great. That can increase your price organically. But ultimately, if you can take a product, goods or services, Provide it with better quality, better customer service, better overall experience, start to finish, and you can provide it for a cheaper price, you will start to exceed your peers, your competitions. So that's ultimately the goal of, of my business. How can I be the best photographer out there? Arguably better than some luxury photographer who calls himself luxury because he slaps a grain filter on it. No, I'm not trying to talk crap, but you get the point is what I'm saying is I'm providing better quality for a more affordable price. People are going to shop packages and they're going to go to my site and they're going to go, oh, wow, this guy offers all his pricing up front. This other guy doesn't. Should I even bother reaching out to that other guy? He calls himself a luxury wedding photographer, but his photos don't even look that good compared to Arc Film, Andrew's. So maybe I'll just reach out to Andrew. Especially today's day and age, in my opinion, the uh, people don't really like reaching out, talking on the phone, having to reach out just to find out stuff. People are very much just like hiding in their shells these days. They want to be able to shop and like do things from behind their screen and giving them that option has done uh, has been pretty successful for me in my experience having all my pricing up front and everything especially if your pricing is relatively affordable you believe that you you are uh, worth the price that you're charging then just let people shop like why why are you guys hiding it all right moving on Got to color in his skin a little bit in each of these photos because it's just a little dark. She's she's very light skin tone. He's a little darker. I'm trying to match them just a little bit. Straight out of camera. Yeah. Looking good. Copy. Paste. Getting into the wide shots. 
Nice. I got the compliments of the seagull up here. If I was a luxury wedding photographer, I'd probably call this one. I'd, I'd name every single shot I delivered and then I'd put a price tag on it. I wouldn't just let them have it. I'd put watermarks all over it and then I'd call it compliments of the seagull. And then I would write it in like fancy writing and then put a price tag on this photo of like $999. And if they wanted to purchase it, oh, oh, you didn't just hire me to come shoot these photos for you and edit them and deliver them. You only paid for me to come out and photograph you, to have the opportunity to purchase your images after. Would you like to purchase this one photo called Compliments of the Seagull? That's how they, that's how they operate, for sure. I, I've heard about it firsthand. Um, my grandma, actually, got a photo shoot done. And this is how photographers used to operate. And this is how some of them still operate. Only, it doesn't even make any sense anymore. Hear me out. So photographers used to shoot on film. Okay, yeah, obviously, back in the day, everyone had film. But, you, so you'd hire a photographer to go out and shoot your stuff, and then you'd have to pay per photo to have the film developed. Okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, because the photographer has to pay per photo to have it developed. Yeah. So then, as soon as digital photography came out, all these photographers started going, oh yeah, uh, you guys still have to pay per image, even though it made no sense at all. It's like, you're already editing the whole gallery? Yeah. And then you want me to pay per image as well, but you already did all the work? Correct. Hmm, that doesn't make any sense. It seems like you're just trying to scam me out of more money, even though you've already done the work. I don't know, it just seemed weird. Like, why do the work if there's no guarantee of them even wanting the photo, or if that's not how your business operates? Personally, that would bug me as the client. It's like, if you're just, just, I prefer to just shoot and deliver as many good photos as possible. That's what people are doing now, but man, those old time photographers are whack-a-doodle in my opinion. And if that's you, I am not sorry. Stop doing that. People don't want to like pay per photo after. That's just like, I don't know, it's just, it's just annoying. I wouldn't as the client. And I started off as the client. I started off as the client. And that's how I got into it. Because I saw as a client, this industry is kind of whack. And I'm going to come in here and show you how it's done. And so I did. I enjoy wedding photography. It's really fun. Now, I'm the best photographer in the world. No, but I'm, I'm the people's photographer for sure. I am here for the people. Give them an easy, nice experience start to finish. Is there dehaze on? I don't like this anymore. Let's not do that. All right, back to the editing process. We're gonna, we're gonna add some contrast to this. Boom, copy, paste, straightening out this photo. Watch me edit a full gallery. Just get in a flow state at this point. I already know what the deal is. Skin adjusting, skin smoothening, making his skin not look so orange. Why did he almost look more orange after I applied that? Hmm. All right, whatever. Looks good. Beautiful. What else should we talk about? Just went on a business rant for half an hour. 
Let's talk about client experience while shooting. All right, so when I'm photographing a couple, I try to only tell them positive things, especially if they're in like uncomfortable in front of the camera, which 99% of people are. So when you start pulling out a big camera and you start pointing it in their face, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know? They start acting like a little insecure, which is totally normal, it's really fine. But if you're constantly telling them, oh my gosh, you guys look so good, oh my gosh, that's perfect, wow, beautiful, oh my goodness, amazing, you guys are killing it, that looks great. Then they're gonna to start to go, oh wow, maybe I feel good in front of the camera. This guy's hyping me up so much that, you know, start to loosen up a little bit, start to be like, yeah, yeah, I do look good in front of the camera. And then the more comfortable your clients are in front of the camera, the more comfortable they're gonna look and the better your photos are gonna be. You don't want a tense couple. It's kind of the worst. Someone who's not just like relaxed and going with the flow and chill. You want someone who's just like, like this client looking pretty, looking pretty chill. They had a little bit of a playful nature to them. The more you can get them in that playful nature where they're just like joking around and being silly and laughing and just like, oh my gosh, you're being such a silly goose. That's the best because then they're just like relaxed and you can feel it through the photos. It's all about prompts. Prompts, hey, walk, walk. I, I set him up in this position. I want you to hold his arm. I want you to look at him, act like you're snuggled up, act like you're a little bit cold. I'll kind of tell him like funny things. Act like it's a, a breeze just came and you're, you're just a little cold. And then, yeah. Okay, now walk towards me, looking at each other, big smiles. Click, 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 click. I can tell you every single thing I said on all these photos. Or you could just go watch my full behind the scenes of shooting this couple, which should be on YouTube now. If it's not already, it will be soon. I had them go up to that rock. So we're having to move up to the rock right up here. And we're gonna get some cool wide shots now. Another thing I despise about the beach is that horizon line. I actually got it pretty, pretty solid here. I darken the photo to see the horizon line because you can't always see it and make sure it's straight. Because when it looks off, it's, it's petty, but it just makes you look that much more unprofessional. So don't do that. This photo, we are going for that dark vibe because we want them to just really pop off that sky. I'm gonna increase the shadows a little bit. That's cool. You know what, let's put it back. I think that was better. All right, that looks good. Copy edit settings. You know what, let's warm this up even more. Warm. Copy edit settings. Paste edit settings. Darken it, nice and moody. It's a vibe. Oh, it's a vibe, yeah, yeah. I am going to, maybe later, I'll show you how to make a triple photo. Storytelling. All right, copy, paste. Ooh, you see what I'm seeing here? These are sweet. Gary, get the hell out of my shot. You don't pay. You don't get to be in the photo. All right. Desaturate, no. Temperature down, exposure. They're gonna start 
blown out if I expose it too much. It's blown out. Finding that perfect balance. There we go. And they're a little warm. That looks good. Dang, I really like this spot a lot. I love the palm trees over here too. All right, that looks great. And I love how you can't see the horizon line of the ocean because that means I don't have to deal with that. I'm not dealing with that cramp. All right, oops. Cute. Pretty. Pretty cute. Cute. Pretty cute. Copy, paste. Copy, paste. Let's darken this one up a little bit more. Oh, that's a vibe. That's so cool. Oh, I love it. Damn, I'm good. You know, I haven't seen any other photographers shooting at this spot, this angle. I'm sure they have. They definitely have. There's no way someone hasn't taken this photo before. But I love showing up to new spots and sometimes, you know, I actually didn't research this spot at all. I just went here, I just go here with my family pretty often. So I just kind of scoped out the spots. Sometimes upon arrival to a new location you're photographing, you could do some research on Instagram. I'll, I'll look up some photos and say, hey, what's the good photo spots here? If I'm like, not really sure. There's kind of a lot going on at a place. This guy posing for me? Sir. Look at him. He's all posing. Sir, get out of my shot, sir. Do you mind? And get your bag out of my shot, too. And get your other bag out of my shot, too. All right, there we go. This is epic. Yeah, so you can scope out shots on Instagram. I usually kind of prefer to uh, arrive on scene and kind of see what looks good in person. Because sometimes if you're just approaching a photo shoot spot with the intention of just how do I copy this photo that I saw that was also at this photo shoot spot, you kind of lose that creative touch that maybe you would have found a different photo shoot spot, a different backdrop type of thing, a different nook in the rocks that looks cool because you're just focused on copying some other photographer that photographed there before. Uh, so just my personal opinion, especially on the wedding day. I notice uh, it is, it, I, I always do this on the wedding day. I'll, I'll look up the wedding venue before I arrive and try to copy photos. Because people, that, that is something that I feel like is kind of essential though. Because when people go to book, look how crystal clear this is. So pretty. This is, by the way, side note, this is the photo I was saying you guys should use your save the date for. Imagine that. You got there. Words up here, Mr. and Mrs., soon to be, whatever. And then like little details down at the bottom. This is like such an epic shot. And it's also very much a power pose. Anytime the client, their head and chest is above the camera, you're gonna be shooting slightly upward. They're gonna, it's gonna make them look more powerful. Uh, that the same thing with like boxing or like any sports you're photographing and if you want to make someone look less powerful You want to make someone look small and petite and cute and innocent and weak You photograph them higher up facing down So like above their head facing down and then they'll look very small and little I feel like that's obvious, but people don't really think about that when photographing couples all the time like you're photographing a couple just standing here. This could be in the street, in the middle of the street, hypothetically. I'm the same level as them. If I just go down a little bit, if I'm shooting from like down low towards more, more closer to the floor, they're going to look powerful. It's going to subconsciously look more powerful versus if I'm shooting way up here and I'm aiming down on them, like I hold my camera up above their headline, and then I'm shooting down, it's gonna make them look like, it's gonna make it look like the earth is like bigger than them and they're just so little. So 
it kind of has that effect on photos. Anyway, I'm not going to crop these in at all. You might be saying to yourself, Andrew, look at the crop opportunity. All right, all right, all right, fine. It does look pretty good. Okay, I like it. You know what? I like both, though. So here's what I'm going to do. Duplicate. Copy. No, crop. Crop tool. Revert. And we're done. You're done. You're done. Go for a kiss. I'm like screaming the prompts at them from down here. It's hilarious. Okay. Now grab her hand and walk down the rock. That guy over on the beach like, what? Is that guy yelling to me? All right. Cool it down a little bit. Good. Copy edit settings. Paste edit settings. Ooh, this is a fun one. This one we did... Uh, mirror, mirror. I, I don't do this prompt often unless I'm just like feeling goofy. So I say, all right, I want you to face each other and then miss, you are going to act out anything you would like and he is going to be a mirror. So he will have to do everything you do in real time. Think of the possibilities. Go. And then she'll just start doing, and if she's not sure, I'll say, you could do dance moves, you could do facial expressions, you could say stuff that he has to say back to you, uh, you know, you could do something embarrassing, think of the possibilities, just have fun, don't think about it too much, just do something, and he'll copy it, you'll start having fun. So she started dancing, and then he's dancing, and you end up with these very, very candid photos that are just so fun, and goofy, and... It's just a good time. This is what engagement sessions are all about, in my opinion. I just love to just throw out random things. You got to read your couples, though. Some of them take them take themselves a little too seriously. I usually start the photo shoot by saying, hey, I want you guys to just, like, don't take anything seriously. Just the more fun and less serious you take this photo shoot, the better the photos will be. That's verbatim what I say. And then you end up with just fun, vibey, photos that when you look back at them makes you smile i think that to me is what makes a good photo the photo when you look back at it it makes you smile because it's photos aren't just photos they're memories especially wedding day especially engagement session and it took my own wedding for me to really understand that my wedding photographer wasn't the best. My wedding photographer I hired was a friend of a friend. We hired him for super cheap because we didn't like all of the other photographers out there. And at the time, I was doing a little bit of photography just for like small businesses and stuff. And I didn't really value it because as a photographer, you're like, oh, why am I going to pay this photographer $2,000 when I can just photograph this thing myself? Like, what's the big deal? Well, I learned later, it's all about prompts. It's all about prompting the couple's Sure, people can take good photos, but you don't know what to say to your couple to get them to look at each other and laugh candidly like this. And without that, you're going to end up with bad photos because you're just going to end up standing there looking like a little awkward little freak without good candid prompts. Hey guys, on the count of three, this is what I said to them here. On the count of three, I want you to look at each other and say the same color at the same time. All right, you're going to guess what he's going to say, and you're going to guess what she's going to say. On the count of three, do you have a color? Okay, one, two, three. And then they look at each other, they say a color, and if they guess the same color, they're like, holy crap, we got it, ha <laughs> And they laugh. And if they don't say the same color, sometimes they'll laugh too, because she'll be like, I thought you were going to say black. I thought you were going to say red. It usually makes them laugh. Some couples I've noticed... 25% of the time, they take themselves too seriously and they'll, they won't laugh. They don't just laugh it off. They go, 
how do you not know my color? And then I have to like quickly be like, oh, that's so funny. Ha ha ha. It's a little bit weird when they don't laugh it off. Like who gives a shit? It's just colors. See, she's dying of laughter because, oh, I think she guessed it right again, second time in a row. That's usually hilarious. For some reason, it's the most innocent prompt. You wouldn't think it's funny, but it is kind of funny just randomly doing this in the middle of your shoot. And obviously me as the photographer, I have to direct it in a way that's like just fun. Hey guys, we're gonna play a little game. All right, here's what we're gonna do. And I'm kind of smiling and laughing as I'm telling them. So they kind of know, okay, this is a funny game. I don't need to take this very seriously. And then you can kind of direct their energy to be more like that as you're photographing. Yeah, this photo shoot's pretty easy. All we have to do is pretty much just get some brush tool going on here. I like the photos to stay warm, but the skin tones don't match obviously so we have uh just brush tool pulling this out all day cropping straightening and pretty much this photo shoot is easy peasy beautiful you have to get some simple stand and smile stuff in these shoots always standing smiling looking cute model pose i think that looks great straight up all right, copy. Another thing I like to do, for some reason, I don't know why this photo specifically kind of looks weird. Uh, they look wider in this photo for some reason. I'm gonna come down here to all the way to the very bottom, geometry, distortion. You want to make someone look fat? You want to make someone look skinny? This is what you do right here. Distortion, plus 10. Aspect, negative 10. We're gonna pinch the photo, just a hair. Just to slim them up a little bit. They're so not needing this. I'm really just doing this to show you guys for an example. Uh, yeah, so this, this lens, Kind of has a weird effect where if you're too close, it'll make someone look a little bit more, uh, these wide angle lenses. If you're too close, they'll kind of look like this. If you're too far away, they'll kind of look like this. But, well, if you're just right, they'll kind of look like that. The 35 millimeter tends to kind of slim people up, which is part of the reason brides love it. And yeah, people, people the more wide angle lens you have and the more, you use that wide angle lens and put your subject right in the middle, it'll make them look slimmer because it kind of stretches all the sides. And if you put someone on the side of a wide angle lens, like way over here, someone you're doing a group photo and Becky is on the side and she's gonna be stretched out a little bit. She's gonna look like she just gained 10 pounds for this one photo. So be careful with wide angle lenses um, and group shots because someone's getting stretched and someone's getting pinched and you don't want to be the one getting stretched. Unless you're going for games. Then you want to be stretched. Make me look huge! Beautiful. This is just a nice, simple stand, smile photo. You gotta get a couple of these. I call them the grandma photo, because I had a client really early on in my wedding days that I was just trying to do all these like cool creative shots and try to be like artsy. And I didn't take a single photo where they were just standing, looking at the camera, smiling. This isn't even that photo. This is more posed, but I didn't take, somehow I missed just a normal photo, a normal just stand and smile looking at the camera photo. I was doing too many prompts and poses and the grandma got mad. She was like, hey, my grandma really just wanted like a photo of us standing and smiling and there's none of that on there. And uh, now she doesn't have a photo to hang up on her wall. I was like, oh, sorry. I, I, don't, I don't remember what happened, but yeah. Just wanted to let you know. So now it's the grandma photo. Even though it's just a normal standing smiling photo. 
damn, this photo, the lighting looking good. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. You know, I don't like this. I don't like the way he's kissing her head. Um, I'll deliver it anyway. I'll let him be the judge. All right, next. Copy, paste, all these edit settings, copying and pasting. And this is lighting. This is golden hour right here. We've officially entered golden hour. What time was this taken at? 5.10. Sun sets? What? That's not right. It must have been 4.10. Because right now, the sun's setting at like 5 o'clock, 4.45. So whatever. We're in the final hour of the sun, and you can tell. Because the lighting is just looking fire. Golden hour is upon us, folks. Look at that. All right, walk. Looking back at her as you walk. Big smiles. Grab your dress, pinch it towards the back of your thigh. That's where you're gonna pinch your dress. This is another good one. Solo shot of just her. Um, all right, this one needs some editing. Skin tones looking too, look at that. The ocean looks a little bit blue. I'm going to desaturate this a little bit. And let's get those magentas pop in. And because it's a nice portrait of her, I want her to pop a little bit more. Contrast up, copy edit settings. And we're gonna focus on right where she's at. That's pretty good. That's good. If I crop in too much to make her center, I'm not gonna see enough of the hand. Well, I guess, no, I kinda liked it before, see? Yeah, that's good. All right, we have a couple of these. Copy, paste. Horizon line looking good. Uh, this handhold looks awkward. We're gonna just cut that out completely. But I still wanna keep the girth of the photo. Andrew, why wouldn't you just say width? The width of the photo. The girth of the photo? You're disgusting. That sounds gross. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I said that, that's weird. The width of the photo. Here we go. Copy, paste. Uh, how did I not notice this handhold looking not aesthetic? I'm gonna cut that out. Beautiful. You know what? Why? Why not? Why not add that top layer all the way in there? Beautiful. This could totally be her fiance's wallpaper to his iPhone or whatever phone he has or that one. That's cool. This is the shot I was going for and it's okay. I'm going to clean up the hands a little bit so it's not as dark noticeable. I'm going to go there, do a quick drag here so it's not too affected and we're going to go straight down here to the dehaze. Oh, it's already dehazed a little bit too much. We're gonna go to texture clarity, blur those bad boys out, and strip all the color out of them. No, I'm just kidding. That looks good. And we almost want to, yeah, that looks good. All right, and now we're gonna edit the whole photo as a whole. Pretty, pretty ugly. No, I'm just kidding. You guys ever see that movie Hot Rod? There's a, there's a scene in Hot Rod. I think it's so funny how he, he says, you look pretty to this girl he likes. And then she, she's like, what'd you say? And he's like, oh, he gets all embarrassed. And he's like, oh, I said you look shitty. It's just so funny. That's my type of humor. You look pretty. What'd you say? Oh. I said you look shitty. 
Good night, Denise. Go watch it. It's funny. All right. Same old deal. Why? Look at this. Copy edit settings. Paste edit settings. That does not look good. Oh, it's because I shifted. I'm now way over here pointing almost directly at the sun. The sun's got to be right here somewhere. So that's what's going on. I'm going to make these hands be not so popping. I don't know why they look so popping here. You know what? I'm just going to crop it. Ain't nobody got time for this. Five by seven takes off a little bit. And bada bing, bada boom. That's what I like. That's what I like. Copy. Paste. I like that. I like this a lot. Her arm. Look at her arm. I don't know why this preset, dirty boots and messy hair, it does this. If the photo's not warm enough and there's any like cool coming through, it'll turn it gray, but it kind of looks blue. It's more gray though. And you'll see it on people's faces, especially the skin tones. You'll see that happening. And if it's like, okay, but then there'll be photos where it's like, you don't want to warm them up that much, but you feel like you have to. Here's how you fix that. Say you get a photo that's like, this photo's warm enough, but her skin tones are doing this. And you got the dirty boots and messy hair. You're gonna go to brush tool. You're gonna go brush temperature up. And then you're gonna brush away those cool tones. Wait for it. I'm only doing this for example for you guys. Okay, if my computer will ever load. Four hours later. All right, here we go. And just like that, it's gone. Ooh, pretty annoying though. Pretty annoying step to take. Your skin tones are looking off. My skin tones were not looking off. Therefore, we are not going to do that. I'm simply just going to warm up the photo as a whole. See, looks good. But occasionally you do get stuck with that and that's how you fix that. All right, we got them touching hands. This is so Pinterest right here. And I might need to make this black and white because the skin tones are popping orange AF. That looks good. I just desaturated it like a chunk. Now we're good. Someone banging on my window? All right. Boom. Copy. You know what? This is the type of photo needs the grain. Give me the grain. Give me the grain. That grain. Yeah. Throw up the grind up on that thing. Sorry, guys. I'm just editing alone at my house. Start talking to yourself. Start losing your mind a little bit. All right, looks pretty good. Give me the grind. What's this photo look like with extreme grain? Oh, yeah. It's never enough. This is how much grain I need. It kind of looks cool. I honestly don't hate it with an extreme amount of grain, but I'm not, a, I'm not feeling like a lunatic today, so we're not going to do that. Ooh, spicy. All right. Desaturate. I don't know why I'm, I'm feeling the desaturation in these last few edits here. Matching that horizon line. Isn't that looking good? I think that's it. I think it looks good. You think it needs anything? I don't think so. This golden hour is prime. You get that nice lighting and all you gotta do is just slap a preset on and Hit next, pretty much. Not really, it's, it's not always this easy. 
Every, anytime I get a couple, most days lately, I get really beautiful couples. And I'm just like, well, my job's easy today. If I were to go stand in front of the camera, all my insecurities would start coming out and I'd start editing the photos a lot more. No, I don't know. Some people just need more editing than others, obviously. You know, people with acne or like, people have different skin textures and things and you need to smoothen out their skin. A lot of times, really what it is that you're, that takes up a lot of time isn't anything to do with like, oh, this guy's like, just doesn't look good and I need to edit him to look good. It's nothing like that. Most of the time, it's like, oh, the bride's cold or oh, this person's cold and her skin tone starts to like, like you'll start seeing like, I don't even know what it is. It, like, like her skin tone starts getting patchy, like she's cold. Do you know what I mean? You, you gotta know what I'm talking about. So you have to like fix that. Okay, hold on. I just brushed this way hotter than, I was trying to desaturate it, but I forgot I need to actually fix this. Desaturate, desaturate. Um, yeah, definitely opposite of that. Um, excuse me. Here we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Been going for almost two hours now. Editing this whole engagement session. Oh, I already colored that one. Well, this is how long an engagement session takes, folks. Going through perfecting each one of these images to perfection. Straightening out horizon lines. Copy. Paste. Beautiful. They're very off center here, so cropping in. Nice. We're gonna go straight up just skin smoothening only. This next little bit. Nothing else here. Skin smoothening only. Shadows plus five. Dehaze negative three. All right, and we're just gonna brush her skin. I think it's starting to get a little cold as the sun's starting to set. Their skin is starting to, there's gotta be a proper term and I'm just spacing right now. Get, patchy's not really the word, is it? I don't know. You can tell, you can tell they're kind of getting cold. I don't even know if it was cold, but they look cold. All right. Skin smoothening. The vibes are real. The romance has never been more romantic. As the sun sets, he dips for a kiss. Okay, perfect. We came up here to the top. This, we can have a lot of fun with this sky up here. We're gonna maybe play around with that. Delete this person on a paddleboard. Goodbye. All right, get that horizon line looking good, looking sharp. The aesthetics of this photo is very nice. Warming this up. I almost like this like darker feel to it. It's kind of a vibe. I might do a couple versions of this. I also have this where I shot it more brighter and I have the darker. Let's do a Let's do a dark, moody vibe on this one. I kind of like this. A little darker vibe. All right, then we're gonna go to masking options. Sky select or background. Let's see if background selects the correct background. Nah, it's gonna be sky. It's just gonna be the whole entire thing. We don't want that. Or do we? Let me see if I can make this work. Okay, reset all sliders. 
Going straight to the D haze here. This is how you get that sky to pop. Obviously, that's way too much, but just for... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks perfect. No, shit. So we're going to go <clears throat> add some color, reduce the highlights so we can see more of it. If you reduce the contrast, sometimes that actually uh, works for bringing out more detail in a weird way for these high... Oh man, that looks so bad. Just contrast to them. Yeah, you almost want that to be even darker. So they're popping a little bit. All right. We're gonna add more color. Ooh. Ooh, it's not bad. See, it's also turning these plants more green and the plants more red. I almost don't, I don't know if I like that or not. We'll play around with it. We'll, do, we'll add a little bit. All right, and then we're going dehaze. Should we dehaze more? Hmm. No, you can kind of start to tell there's like a weird effect around them if you dehaze a little too much. Clarity, should we soften everything up? Ooh. That actually does make them look sharper. I'm just completely playing around at this point. And then you know what I'm gonna do, just for shits and giggles? We're gonna just put a new one on them, totally different, spot everything, undo all these sliders, and we're gonna brighten them, perhaps? Brighten. Gonna make their skin tones a little more skin tony, warm. We're gonna make the shadows perfect. Mm. No, that's fine. You know what they definitely need? They seem a little noise reduction. Let me zoom in on them. Get that noise reduction accurate. Okay, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing here? Wait for it. Okay, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, they look very like grainy. Almost need to soften them up with that noise reduction. Softening them up. Um, actually, this would be an interesting idea. Noise reduction a lot and then add some grain back to them. Um, customize, of course. Size, three, roughness, 20. And then, so we noise reduced and then added grain. That's kind of my cheat code for making them look soft while still making them look sharp. That's the cheat code right there. Uh, I like this photo. I like this a lot. I feel like if I keep editing it, it's just gonna get worse from here based on my years of experience. Maybe just overall brighter. That's perfect. I actually really love this. Before, after. What a vibe. It's like this photo makes me want to go there again. It almost makes me feel like I'm enjoying this view with them. Copy edit settings and paste edit settings. Wow. Wow, that looks so good. Not, you know why it looks all jacked up for, the, for you newbies out there? Because of all these masks we put on this photo. So we're gonna try an attempt. Oh, you know what? That's not why. That's not why at all. It looks jacked up because the photo was shot way differently. That's right. I apologize. This photo was shot way brighter and this photo was shot way darker. So I'm just gonna re-edit this entirely because it needs a re-edit in my opinion. Settings when I shot this were way different. I'm gonna go just, I'm just gonna do the, the, the easier way of getting the photo to look the way I want. Not so much focus on the, the background, although we can. 
we want to. There's actually another cheater way of getting, if you brighten the photo enough, it might, it might just trick the, okay, okay, watch this. Mask, sky, let's hope it gets the ocean in the sky. Come on, come on. Oh, it got half of the ocean in the sky. What the heck is that about? Come on. Let's try it again. Completely, completely just blow out the sky. And we're gonna attempt it one more time. Sky, come on, select the sky. Oh, it doesn't want to do it, it already did it. It's like, you thought you were getting a different result? Well, you're not. All right, this looks pretty good. Warming it up a lot. Pinks, magentas. Add that color back in there. Ooh, man, this is nice. Vibey. Should add some dehaze, maybe a hair. All right, luminance. Looking good. And let's go ahead and add some grain on the whole image as a whole. Just a little bit of grain. Like you can't even really tell type of grain. That's what we like. That looks pretty good. All right, I like this. I think it's a little too, a little too much color for some reason. All right, copy edit settings. This should copy over well. Yeah. Me. Not too bad. Beautiful. She doesn't look happy in this photo, but she does look pretty. So we'll keep it. Saturation down. I'm going to brighten this up a little more. No, let's keep it like that. Moody. Copy edit settings. Paste edit settings, there's her smile. Boom, and saturation down, getting a little too close for my comfort for saturation. Starts affecting skin tones, making things look wonky. And let's keep the dark moody vibe a little bit going. Beautiful, copy, paste, alrighty. Going in for that kiss. I don't know why the background in this photo specifically is looking very blown out. It didn't it kind of look like that before, I guess, but what did it look like straight out of camera? Oh, well, that's why. <laughs> yeah, okay. Copy, nothing I can do about that. And paste. For those of you who don't know, uh, you can always, usually with a good camera, brighten up a really dark photo, but you can't darken a really bright photo. It's not really how that works. If it's blown out, you just lose all detail, but you can brighten stuff up to a point where you can get a bunch more detail. Like, look at this over here. Down here, we got dark bushes. Straight out of camera, I mean, looking dark, but if you brighten it, there's a lot of detail hidden in there versus come up here to this sunset. If I darken it, we're not gonna get much more out of this. It kind of just starts, it just looks like that. So all the details pretty much still there for the most part, but we're not focused on that right now. We're focused on them. I'm going to darken this even more. I really like this. I like to capture the natural, like how it really looked because it's already so beautiful. And there's a lot of photographers out though that out there that'll try to make stuff look nothing how it looked in real life. I think the natural way something looked is often the prettiest because it's true. It's real. Get out of here with that hippie talk. No, I'm just kidding. No, it really does. It really does look good. 
Nature is beautiful as frick, dude. Come on, man. Like, it's so freaking pretty out here, dude. Like, why would you even edit the photo to begin with, dude? It's already so flipping beautiful. Like, come on, man. I don't like that. I don't like anything I just did here. I'm going to undo all that. Get it out of here. All right. That looks good. Copy. I wonder if I make them even... Hmm. Too dark. All right. Next. Spending too long on one photo. Them laughing at each other. That's cute. Oh my gosh. You guys are the cutest couple ever. So I'm telling them what to do in all of these photos. They don't just... They don't just naturally go into these photos, guys. So if you're just watching this editing tutorial, you should probably go watch the behind the scenes, how I direct this whole entire photo shoot as well, once it comes out, if it's not already out. Chances are when you're seeing this, it'll already be out. Unless you're watching it like right now. That doesn't make any sense. All right, here we go. Cute. So I'll say reach up with your hand and I show him, grab her chin like this. I'm doing it on myself. And then I'll say pull her in for a kiss. Pretty. Man, I'm going to go back to the original edit settings. Okay. This is good. This is a, what you call a skin tone nightmare. Very, you got the sun blasting on his face. You got the sun blasting on the back of her arm. Everything about this is screaming. Put me in black and white. Oh yeah. Perfect. There we go. And I'm gonna put all these photos in black and white, but some of them are only gonna get black and whites. Cause I'm a lazy piece of crap. No, I'm just kidding. No, I feel like that photo would have, I've, I've tried to edit photos that look like that. Sometimes, don't even bother. They're not gonna look good. All right, beautiful. I love this, it's beautiful photo of these plants. I'm feeling dark and moody for this, this golden hour. Dark and moody. That's cute. So Pinterest. Another one of the exact same. I flagged another one of the exact same because I was just loving the vibes. Actually, I'll keep it wide just in case they want to use it for their save the date. Maybe like the back of the save the date with like all the details or something. I don't know. Cute. Paste. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Brush tool. His skin is looking cold. And I don't mean temperature. I mean his skin looks a little bit rough here for some reason. Cool. And then we're going to come down here. To the softening tool, clarity down, texture down, 75, 75. Get her shoulder a little bit, might as well. And boom, looking soft again. And we have a classic, a timeless classic. Grandma will love this photo. Beautiful. 
That'll be a custom save the date just for grandma. All right. Mm, black and white. Skin tones. Looks good. Somehow this one doesn't look like it needs a black and white. I can kind of get away with this. All right. Oh, perfect. Finished this engagement session on a cliff with a dip kiss. Wow. How romantic. I kind of wish I cropped this better or I took this photo better with them either in the middle of this because now I have to completely remove this bench. It's just in the shot at this point. That wasn't the original plan. All right. Time for some skin smoothening. We can wrap this photo shoot up. Come on, there we go. Lower, smaller spots. Computer's not catching up. What's going on? Skin smooth, skin smooth. Beautiful, looks good. Warm it up a little bit, maybe, huh, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Saturation down, perfect. All right, same deal. Uh, I'm gonna leave this one. I know the chairs are in the shot, but it's just different. You, know, you already have the other one. Paste, oh, how fun. All right. Bring it in a little bit. A little playful one to finish the sesh. Cute, little skin smoothing on the cheeks. Come on, here we go. What, here we go. This is just a, ignore all those other sliders. They're not really important. The only thing that's important right here is texture negative 75, clarity negative 75. And it doesn't need to be exactly. Oh, we're doing noise reduction too. Whatever, I'm just, I'm just painting whatever I have set here. And I know it looks good, so I'm not questioning what I have adjusted here. Mystery brush. All right. Sweet. That might be the last photo. Let's see. And it's the last photo! Woo! Just take a second look at these. Sometimes my eyes play tricks on me. No, I'm not gonna take a second look at that one. Second look at these, making sure everything looks good. If you're staring at the computer too long, when I stare at the computer too long, sometimes my eyes will just automatically adjust to these exact tones. And then your eyes actually get like worn out of looking at the same coloring. Uh, it's a real thing. Like if you look at a, a photo, there's this like scientific little experiment you can do. You look at a photo that's like um, green and red and then all of a sudden it like, you stare at it for like 30 seconds and then all of a sudden it'll remove the color from the photo and you'll see the opposite color even though the photo's black and white. You'll see like green and red switch places. It's really weird. But basically the coloring in your own eyes or your, I don't know the scientific term, just hear me out. If you stare at a color too long, your eyeball starts to become numb to that color essentially. And yeah, that's why I don't recommend, 
I don't I don't try to edit late at night because I notice the coloring in the morning looks off to me because really all I'm doing is just exposing my eyes to one color. Uh, and then you start editing kind of wacky. Your skin tone start looking weird. But this looks good to me. Slightly pink, slightly warm. That's what we like. Pretty warm on this session. Um, increase the contrast on this. Kind of go through and just, I, I, I tend to just kind of go through, look at some photos from this outside perspective and kind of revisit some photos before I deliver the gallery, before I copy and paste all the edits. Wow, a lot of these up top ones. This is a cool photo though. I love this photo. This will probably go on my, my website. These are fun. These will make her laugh and smile when she sees these. That's fun. These photos look kind of cold to me, but the skin tones look good. So whatever. All right. All right, and then to finish it off, you know, I'm gonna revisit these right here. Higher contrast on this and warm it up a little bit. Yeah, that looks better. Higher contrast, making them pop a little more and adding warmth. I think that looks better in my opinion. Just small minute things. Something I learned at my previous job um, cleaning carpets is my boss used to say, hey, at the end of every job, take five minutes, go around the house and look for any other small things you can do to perfect the job. Like whether that be, you know, just, just wiping down anything you can, just fixing up anything you can, because it really goes a long way. And I applied that to my job here, doing photos after every job, I'm going through these galleries and I'll take five minutes to just sit and kind of go through my work and see if I can perfect anything just a little bit better. You know, is this popping enough? Should we add some contrast? No, it looks pretty good. It's popping enough. Add some contrast. Nope. Nope, looks good. I think we're good. Kind of was perfecting it as we're going. Okay, so from here, main thing I like to do is turn them all black and white. So I'll take one photo, usually the end photo here for some reason. I don't know why I just have it. Copy it, or I'll duplicate it, and then I'll come down, edit settings, I'll clear. I have a custom preset that's just called clear. Ooh, that Jose Villa. Jose Villa looks so good. I wish I could change my style to this. I don't know why I just like it. It's just so much different than my style. Jose Villa preset. Looking nice. It looks so like high end. Like just the colors are so vibrant and like I, I like it. I miss color. I only edit the way I edit because that's what the people want. That's what gets you booked. Personally though, I like the colorful stuff. Uh, okay, anyway. Black and white, and we're gonna go negative on this. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. Okay, because when you start right here and it's just so close to being perfect, you end up having to slide it just a hair up and down, up and down right there. And it lags, it lags just a tiny bit, two, three seconds. So if you start with it way down here, and then you can almost just guess right here on the slider where it's gonna be based on how dark it is. So I will just tap and it's, it's almost perfect. And then I'll drag. I don't know why when you start, it, it tends to like not lag as much when you just click somewhere on the line. See, there's no lag. But if I drag it, it tends to lag a little bit, especially if I'm going through a lot of photos, you'll see. So, whatever. I'm gonna put it right here. Um, I'm also going to do highlights and shadows, whatever. Oh, this is Dirty Boots and Messy Hair, uh, black and white, but I halved everything. 
I halved all the sliders. Whatever. Moral of the story, it's like a custom Dirty Boots Messy Hair preset that I have. Okay, copy edit settings. We're gonna come up here, select almost all photos, all, and then I'm gonna unselect the one I just edited, unselect the one that's already black and white. Perfect. And then, that's all of them. Good. 118, so 122. Duplicate. 118. Perfect. Don't touch anything. Command V. Paste that black and white onto all the photos. Done. And they're going to start turning black and white. <clears throat> and then from here, you just click spacebar and come up here. This is the fastest editing you can do. If I were to just be a black and white only photographer, do you, can you imagine just how quick and easy that would be? So fast. So fast. All right. The only reason this is taking as long as it's taking is because my computer's lagging a little bit because it's applying the preset all the photos at the same time are you seeing what I'm seeing see how I have the exposure set down and then I just click and it's almost perfect and I just click just click now if I were to go drag it from right here lagging see that lagging I'm telling you just click it I found that it's these tiny minute details that really, it all adds up. It all adds up to make your editing twice as long. So this is a whole engagement session. You watch me edit start to finish. Well, besides flagging, flagging took 20 minutes. So you missed that part. But everything else, this is how long an engagement session takes me to edit. And this is an easy engagement session. I had an engagement session the other day where, uh, well, it was a family photo shoot, but the babies were kind of cold and their skin was really like red because their cheeks were really red because it was cold outside. Also, the guy's skin, I don't, I'm not really sure why, but his skin just looked like a little more, more rough. So I had to edit a lot of skin smoothening on that, like a lot, and that took me a lot longer to edit. This one, we actually did a ton of skin smoothening as well. So honestly... We didn't do skin smoothening, we did uh, kind of color matching, like making him look not as orange. Because he just had a totally different skin tone. Alrighty. So actually, this one wasn't as easy as it could have been. If they were both the exact same color skin, it would have probably been even less time. So, the orange versus more pale white definitely she's not pale white but they both had a good tan but with him being already a darker complexion and being tan it definitely was a different skin tone beautiful look at this i'm gonna add a little contrast in that Ooh, vibey just going through black and whiting all these See what I'm doing? One click, one click and I'm done. Adjust a little bit, back to one click and done. And because I'm only doing this after I edited all the photos, I'm already copying the photos that have already erased the people out of the background. I've already applied the skin smoothening that I needed. You wait till the very end to do the black and whites because you copy the photos that you already edited. You already made the adjustments that you needed to do on whatever, you know, deleting people out of the background, removing a pimple, anything like that. You're, you're getting rid of all that stuff and then duplicating that version of the photo. And then you apply this black and white and it's like, you don't even have to do anything besides just adjust the exposure, which is literally all I'm doing. And occasionally if you want to get, 
get real crazy. You could adjust the contrast, but this is it. And then they're gonna have 250 photos if you count the black and whites. Unique coloring options. Yeah, that's pretty much it guys. We're pretty much done here, but hope you enjoyed this whole process. How I went through everything. Um, I know this is probably gonna be a huge help for some of you who just wanna learn how an actual professional wedding photographer actually goes through and edits a whole gallery. This is exactly, this is it. This is what I do. And each photo, uh, each photo shoot has its own little things. This one, the whole photo shoot, we're adjusting his skin tone, you know, every photo. And that's what you're gonna find with, with each couple. They're each gonna have their own thing. The next guy, it's gonna be, you know, he has a pimple on his nose. And I need to just do the healing tool. Every photo, healing tool, getting that pimple. Healing tool, getting that pimple. So it is tedious if you don't like just chilling, listening to a good podcast. In this case, I'm just sitting and listening to myself talk. But you can put on a good podcast. Good podcasts, I recommend, you might ask. Um, I like Kill Tony. I like stand-up comedy. So you try whatever, whatever you want, you know. Audiobooks are huge too. Honestly, if you haven't listened to audiobooks, I would recommend audiobooks like business books. If you want to learn to actual, if you want to learn the actual business side of things. What audiobooks, you might be asking? Talking 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Talking Think and Grow Rich. Talking Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, there's a lot. And with every single book, 10% of it, you're probably not going to agree with. 10% of it, you're probably going to go, mm, this guy is whack. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't agree with that at all. But I, I personally listen to books knowing that I'm not going to agree with every single thing this guy says, but I'm trying to pull the 90% of it that I feel like is good information, is valuable, and apply that to my life. When I'm reading audiobooks, I'm not trying to go, oh, this is gospel. And if he says one thing I don't agree with, everything he says must be trash. Because that's not, that's not really good, a really good way to approach audiobooks. Everyone is like very unique in their own ways and has opinions that are different. And that's why you're listening. You're trying to just understand, hey, this guy has an opinion, that guy has an opinion, um, and make your own opinion, essentially. Audiobooks are super important for my business. They have pretty much taught me everything I know about sales. Well, not everything, but a lot of what I know about sales and why I'm so uh, into the business side of wedding photography is, is from just like studying these books, a lot of books. I mean, just one book alone, the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, if you actually did every single thing that book tells you and applied that in your life, your life would be so much different. Like you could be so successful just off of that book alone. It says super simple stuff too. Like, like smile in everything you do. Just smile huge. And it's so important. Uh, if, if I'm doing a phone call with a client and I'm not smiling, chances are I'm not going to book that client because when you talk with a smile, like, like just listen to my voice right now. Okay. So when you talk with a smile, you can kind of tell the person smiling just by the way they're talking. Like, can you tell that I have a huge smile on my face and you go, hi, Hey, how's it going? Oh, cool. Tell me about your stuff versus me not smiling. Oh, cool. How's it going? Oh, cool. Tell me about your relationship. Oh, cool. Oh, it's like you want to hire the person that's making you feel good. And the person that's making you feel good, probably the smiley person. He seems fun to work with. Hey, 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 how's it going? Big smile on his face all the time. So 
I mean, that's huge in business. People will be attracted to you more. They'll want to work with you more if you're just smiling a ton. It's worked for me. Um, you'll attract similar people. And if you like working with people that are smiley, people that have big smiles or also fun to shoot, you know, your, your photo shoots will go better because you just have couples that are just always in a good mood and smiley. And that's fun to photograph. Yeah, that's my favorite book. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, the book title itself is very misleading. It really should be called How to Get People to Know, Like, and Trust You. And the know, like, and trust factor is a thing. It's called the know, like, and trust factor. You, you will be a complete failure if you don't have the know, like, and trust factor. What is the know, like, and trust factor? If someone doesn't know you, like you, and trust you, they will not, not book you. They will not do business with you, and they will not, you will be a failure. So how do you get people to know you, like you, and trust you? Well, it starts by smiling, for one. I mean, getting people to know you, obviously you have to like do business marketing and all that stuff. All right, we're done here. Getting people to like you, smile, that's definitely the easiest way. You don't even have to talk. If you just walk around with a huge smile on your face, people just like you. You know people like that? You probably like that person. This guy's always happy. We used to have a guy on the football team who, was, who we named him Smiley. He never talked, but he just smiled huge all the time and just like stood around circles. Everyone loved the kid because he just smiled all the time. His name was Smiley. We named him that. Anyway. That's what I'm talking about. And then how do you get people to trust you? That comes down to genuinely being uh, a good guy. Don't be a piece of shit, essentially. So, yeah. And trusting also comes down to getting people to know you. I mean, the more someone gets to know you and they can see that you're a good guy, they're not going to, they're, they're going to trust you more. Um, you know, the more time you can spend with them. The more someone opens up to you, the more they feel like you know them and that they trust you. It's a really weird psychology hack. So during a interview, these look really good. Damn, I'm good. During an interview process, I might say something like, hey guys, like let's, let's talk about your relationship. I, I'm asking all the questions. I'm talking to them, getting them to open up to me as much as possible because I want to get to know them. I want to get to know about the relationship and stuff and, the, and then I can give them better service. But also, the more they tell me their whole life story and you open up to someone, the more they feel like they know me. It's really weird. Even though I, they essentially know nothing about me other than the fact that I'm responding and going, oh my gosh, that's a cool story, blah, blah, blah. But if this chick tells me, hey, I love Harry Potter, I don't even know what this is. It, it's, sungla- it's glasses with a... Harry Potter tattoo, I'm guessing. I could be totally wrong. And she tells me her whole life story about how, you know, she's a huge Harry Potter fan and da-da-da-da, and her and her dad used to go to Harry Potter all the time, and then he passed away, da-da-da. She's opening up to me at this point, and she's going to start to feel like I'm someone she can trust because she's opening up to me. So that builds the trust factor, even though she's, I'm just asking her questions, getting her to open up to me. So moral of the story... No like and trust factor is huge. Read as many books as possible. That's what I I try to read as many books as possible and just learn more. And the more you learn, the more you can understand business, psychology of how people work and why people choose the people they do. The business of convenience is another huge factor. It's huge. It's why Starbucks is successful at all. Their coffee sucks compared to any other coffee shop out there. We all know it, okay? We all know Starbucks coffee sucks. But guess what? It's convenient. The business of convenience is what they're in. I'm going to go to Starbucks because it's right there on the corner. It's a drive through and they make my coffee fast, and I can get out of there, and I get my coffee, my, my caffeine fix. I get my fix of coffee, whatever. No one wants to go stand inside a boot, 
bougie coffee shop for five to ten minutes while a barista with purple hair gives you a dirty look when you don't tip her five bucks after she spins the iPad around. Like, do you understand? It has nothing to do with the product at that point. It's just the service sucks and it's not convenient. I have to get out of my car, walk in. I have to deal with this person who seems like they hate their life. I'm just saying. I'm not saying all coffee shops are like that and whatnot, but you get what I'm saying. It, the contrast. So, people at Starbucks, pretty nice. People at, why is Chick-fil-A so successful? They're quick, they're easy, they're definitely not cheap, but the people are so nice. You notice that? Everyone's so happy and happy to see you. Hi, of course. Da -da -da. So that's that's another thing. It's like people like to go there because they feel like they feel good going there emotionally. Anyway, that's the whole album, guys. Hope you enjoyed the little business rants here and there. Get some insight into the business mind of a full-time wedding photographer. And yeah, these crops. Maybe I should do some more of these real quick. No, we won't. We won't. But yeah, these crops are pretty sweet. I really enjoyed doing this. And showing you guys how behind the scenes look of wedding photography engagement session on the beach. Uh, yeah, this album's done. We're going to go deliver this to the client and she's going to love it. And it's going to be amazing. All right, see you guys in the next video.